Hey guys, so today's video is going to be about scouting in Connected Franchise. And basically I'm going to just give you some tips and what I do basically, because you can scout however you want, but I think my way is pretty efficient. And some other videos, they they waste a lot of their points on things I, I would not. But the first thing I want you to know is that I have 5,600 points here with Andy Reid. And the reason for that is he's a high level coach and he has the double scouting points trait which are very important. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you right now how important it is. So we're gonna go over here to Jay Gruden, who's a low level coach. This is the same point in the year, by the way. A low level coach with not that does not have the double scouting points trait. And as you can see, he has 1,900 points and I did not spend a single point on any of these coaches. I just simmed to this point in the off season. And that's another thing is that you're gonna want to wait till this point in the off season to build up your points because you might have player you might not know what you're gonna want your team. But here we have Pete Carroll, and he's a high level coach, but he does not have the double scouting points. So here he has almost 2,900 points, which is just about half of what Andy Reid had. So if you're making a coach, you definitely want to get him to a high level and definitely get that double scouting points as soon as possible. It'll go a long way for basically building up your team. So as I said before, you are definitely going to want to wait until this point because you might be signing free agents and when I simmed this, I don't think that the team did free agents. So if we come into team needs here, uh, the overalls are pretty bad on offense. I don't think the team re-signed any players right now. But if you come in here to team needs, you, you're you going to get a good feel of the, the positions you need. Basically. C's and D's basically. If you see a D player, you're going to want to replace them. So uh, a center here, definitely a right guard. I don't think we have a right guard. And on defense, left outside linebacker. So either of those three are going to be a good first round because you want them to make a big impact and you also want them to basically start. You want a first round pick to start that year. Be a big impact. But second through seventh, it's 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 wherever you want to go and the, the way that i usually come in for like second through maybe like fourth round pick is just to come in here and look at my players that are pretty old so on the on the chiefs here they're not that old the oldest is 33 and that's a punter so his the main thing is that once they get past 30 their speed starts to drop really quickly and they're also thinking about retirement so if i look at some other teams right here you know, they, some of them, like here's the Dolphins, they have like 10 players who are 30. You definitely want to have some backups that you can game prep and maybe start throughout the season. You know, maybe. You, know, you might find a good player and he might step into that role pretty quickly. So Tom Bahali might be a good choice here. He's, he's a 91 overall, but his speed is probably dropping very quickly. And he only has a few years left, so. And for some other picks, you know, it doesn't have to be like second to fourth round. It can be anywhere, but because they forgot to sign free agents, there's a lot of holes in this, but you might have some other holes even if you do sign players. So wide receiver, we need some help. And, you know, just some third string players. It's better than nothing. It's better than having a free agent that's, you know, 30 years old. But here's a corner. We have one corner missing that the nickel. We might be able to get a seven year overall in the draft. That's pretty, pretty easy. That'd be a good. That would be a good pickup for us in this draft. So now that you understand what you want to pick, we're gonna look what pick we have. So if you come over here to team, and if you go under rosters, it's actually under. You can look at your picks. So we have all seven of our picks, and we have the fifteenth pick in the first round. And that's pretty much all we need to know for right now. Alright, so now we're actually ready to start scouting. So we know we have the first round pick, pick 15, and most likely we have the 15th pick of each round. So right off the bat, picks 1 through 15 are off your board. They should be. It's just a waste of points. If you're really looking at a player, like you really want, like let's say this left end, you might want to trade up, but that's a different, that's a different topic. And I would not look at your exact pick and be like, oh, I'm definitely going to get this player because the computer won't choose certain players that are most likely not good and those players will accumulate and once you get to like the third and fourth round you'll notice that players 20 picks after they're projected 
are basically going to start going. So in the first round, I would look five to ten after your pick for players. And that's basically so you're guaranteed to get the player that you want. So now I'm going to show you the method I think a lot of people do, which is just scout the overall. It's 500 points to do that. So with Pete Carroll, you can only scout 5 people. With Andy Reid, you can scout 11 people. And it is going to give you a good idea if they're going to be good on your team. Because it, it shows you their overall rating, pretty much. But the thing is, is that you want to be able to scout 20 to 30 people, not 5 to 10. It's a lot more effective with the method I'm about to show you. And if you come down here, like, it's basically useless in late, later rounds, because you're always going to see C's, you're always going to see D's. And at this point, C's and D's are basically the same thing. You can make a D overall, a C overall, pretty quickly. So now I'm going to show you the method that I use. I think it works a lot better. And the reason that it works better is that you can scout three to four times the amount you can with the overall method. You will be spending between, like, 100 and 250 points max on each player and you'll have a good idea of who's going to fit pretty good on your team. And a lot of this is will be preference, but there are some core things I'll show you. So some people think that production and tangible and physical rating have to do with how good your player's going to be. I'm going to be testing that later in the video. So stick around if you want to see that. But basically, you're going to be scouting the important aspects of a player. And once you find that your player is not what you like, you basically stop scouting. So this player is pretty good. He has A speed. So remember that A is 90, B is 80s, C is 70s. So this guy's got good speed. He's got B catching, which isn't that bad. And his stats are mo more or less pretty good. He is a first round pick, by the way. So, But I would not be scouting awareness or route running or release or catching traffic if I knew he only had B speed. So you could spend eight eight points, find out the speed of this player, and if it's B, you don't even have to spend your other points, as opposed to spending 500 looking his overall. So here we go with this guy, and he's pretty good too. He's obvious, these guys are first round, so you're going to be spending a lot more points in your early rounds. And awareness pretty much just will give a good idea of the overall, because if they have low awareness, you can raise it up pretty quickly and their overall will go up. So these are the, basically the core stats that a wide receiver, and these stats over here are basically useless. I've never needed to have any of these scouted, really. You know, you might want to do personality if you're an owner or any of that, but you most likely know what that is if you're doing that. So here's another wide receiver, and this guy's got like E jumping. We already know what stats we're looking for here. And the thing is that on the draft day, you can actually see all the stats that you've scouted, which it makes it easy that you don't have to make a decision now. So these players are more or less the same. And will most likely have very similar overalls. So if we have to pass up on one in the draft, it won't make that much of a difference. And you can compare all the stats right here. It makes it pretty easy. So, you know... One of them has a little bit less catching, one of them has a little bit less release. They're more or less similar. It's the guys in the later round that are going to have huge discrepancies that you're going to want to take note of. So I'm going to show you different types of players, I'm going to look at the centers here. And basically, often tackles, often the guards, centers, you're looking for the same thing. You're, they're blocking. So, the good thing about offensive line is that they only have like four stats that you need. Pass block, run block, impact block, and strength. I would say that those are the four you're going to want to scout. If you need a little bit more like awareness or whatever, you can do that too. But the thing is, is that with those four stats, that's 40 points. You can scout a lot of offensive linemen, and you're going to want to, because from what I've noticed, is that offensive linemen are consistently good in the later rounds. There's not many players that are like high 70s, 80s in the later round. But when they are, they're most of the time offensive line. And I'm going to show you here in a moment. We get a good player in like the fourth or fifth round. So this guy's got B's and C's. It's not too bad. If you're going for late round, you know, B's is good. B's and C's are what you're going to want to look at. If you're looking early round, and here's the guy. A, run block. B, pass block. B, impact block. That is a very good player for fourth round. I would definitely pick this guy up. 
Here, we're gonna look at the 6 gram guy, too. So he's got C, C, and B, so it's not not that good. But if you look at the guys we scouted in the earlier rounds a little bit, you know, they don't even have any of the stats. They only have the impact block. So Evan Newsom would be a guy you want to put on your radar. He's also 20 years old. He has a lot of time to develop, too. So now we're going to look at quarterback. Quarterback, it's very difficult to get a good quarterback from a draft. And early rounds is where you're going to want to stay for quarterbacks. Late rounds are basically useless. Unless you want a third string just to have on your team, then I wouldn't really look at quarterbacks in the later rounds. Not even backups. They're consistently good early and pretty bad later on. And for quarterback, there's also a lot of stats that may be subjective to what you want. So this guy's a strong arm. I wouldn't expect him to have good speed. But if you want, if speed's important to you, then do it. The main thing is throw power, throw accuracy, all three of them. And you can go from there with what you use. If you use a lot of play action, then definitely go for play action. If you're a running quarterback, then obviously speed, agility, all that is going to be important to you. A lot of the stats for quarterbacks are ones you're going to want to scout. But again, there's a bunch of stats over here you don't need. And most likely, you're going to be spending under 500 points. Definitely. This guy's got C speed. You know, he's got, he's got some pretty good throw accuracy. Not the greatest. Quarterback is definitely one of the harder ones to scout and get a good one from the draft, like I said before. So now we're going to look at halfbacks. If you can get a halfback from free agency trades, whatever it is, I would not look to draft one. Drafting one is difficult, and for some reason the computer just does not. They just don't pick halfbacks. And if you notice by round 7, like... 20 out of the 25 like top players like sorted by round are going to be halfbacks. So if you really want a halfback, I would go high rounds because later rounds, just like quarterbacks, they're pretty much garbage. So I kind of skipped over it already, but the first guy we scouted had B speed, A acceleration. That's just not a player I want on my team. Even though he was a one cut, B speed is just not going to cut it for halfback. So we're looking at this guy. This guy has A speed. And he's also one cut. And he's got some pretty decent he's got some pretty decent stats. He's got A agility. A's and B's across the board. He's a first round. And that's what I'm saying is that the, the high rounds you're gonna want to get a halfback in. Later rounds, don't even bother. You can probably just pick one up in the seventh round and just choose out of the like, you know, the third round guys, because they won't be gone by then. So now we're gonna look at tight end. And depending on how you use your tight end, I would imagine most people use theirs as a receiver. If you use it for blocking, then there's blocking in here. You can scout, pass block, run block, impact block. If you're using receiver, then just do the same thing as receiver. You know, speed, jumping, catching, route running, release. Definitely release is more important on tight ends than receivers because your tight ends are most of the time going to be on the line. You know, getting blocked by a linebacker or whatever. But besides that, it's basically just, just like receivers. So we're going to move on. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at defense. And defense breaks down into line, linebackers, defensive backs. There's not really much discrepancies inside the group, such as like left end and defensive tackle. But we're going to be looking at linemen right here. Basically, speed is very important for linemen. You wouldn't think it would be, but once they break off their tackle from you know, the line, how fast they get to the quarterback is pretty important. Finesse moves and power moves is basically how they handle blocks. And as long as they have one or the other, it seems they can be pretty good. You know, if you look at Robert Quinn, he has 90, like, five power moves, but like 72 finesse moves. As long as they have one or the other, it seems that they can be pretty good. Block shedding is very important just so how fast they can break off their block. And power moves and finesse moves, you know, works with that. And for all defensive players, you're going to want to look at tackle, hit power, um, awareness and play recognition, you know, that's still the same from offense. It's basically just going to show how good they are to begin with. So I'm looking at the later rounds. I forgot the scout strength in the other players. You definitely need that strength, you know, it's just one of those stats that helps out 
with the physical ability of the player. And I'm just going to show you that defensive tackle, it's just the same. They're a little bit different in how they play, but for the most part, because it's like, it's not showing you specific stats. It's only showing you like, oh, C question mark, oh, B question mark. It's not going to make that big of a difference in how their overall turns out. Okay, so now we're going to look at linebackers, and it's basically, they are very similar to the linemen. I would say A speed is a lot more important to the linebackers than it is linemen. And linebackers, you have to worry about zone coverage and man coverage. And, you know, awareness, I wouldn't scout it for a lot of these players. It's just if you know that the player's pretty good. It's just an extra thing. I usually, I usually do it. For some reason, there's not any linebackers or middle linebackers that are going in the first two rounds. That's very interesting. And outside linebacker, the only difference is whether you run a 3-4 or a 4-3. If you run a 3-4, then block shed, finesse moves, power moves, that's going to be a lot more important to you. And if you're running a 4-3, then I wouldn't even really look at those stats. You know, block shed maybe, but not power moves, finesse moves. Because that linebacker is going to be the one that's on the line if he's in a 3-4. Now we can look at defensive backs. For corners, speed is very important. It's just like a receiver, I would not even go with a B speed cornerback. This guy's got really good fast speed. Jumping's important. Man and zone are important. And catching is definitely one I would look at just to see if they get their hands on the ball, are they gonna make plays? Are they gonna intercept the ball? That's very important when you come to cornerbacks because uh, drops are very common in that. Even if you turn up catching like all the way, they still drop it. And late round corners, it's it's very difficult to find a late round corner, I would say. One of these is, that's really important is press. Just to knock the receiver off the route. If you can knock the receiver off the route, spend that extra second, that's an extra second that the line can spend trying to get to the quarterback. Two, press is definitely important. And this guy's got... This guy's got some pretty good stats all around. I would definitely might look into him. And free safety and safety, it's the same thing. It's it's all, defensive backs are all the same. That's why that you can move them around on the field a lot. And one thing I noticed about this guy is that he's got B catching. And I almost just forgot about it there, but B catching, that's a good player. This guy's obviously first round. That's probably why he is first round, because he makes a lot of plays on the ball, gets a lot of interceptions. If you can find a B or C catching in the later rounds, definitely get it. And, you know, I'll just throw in some kickers. Kickers, they cost 20 points. Kick power and kick accuracy. Awareness, anything like that, not important. All they have to do is kick the ball. You could spend... I, I, I do this for every single draft, even if I have a good kicker. Because if you find like an undrafted player and he's A, A kick power, A kick accuracy, you, I don't know, you might want him. It's, it's literally 60 points. Usually there's three kickers, three punters. It's 60 points for each, or 120 points in total. That's definitely points you can spare. And you know, I think this punter, like the undrafted punters were actually better than the punter that's going to go in sixth round. But he's an accurate punter, so he probably has more accuracy than kick power. And as you can see, we spent, I think, almost 2,000 points. But we ended up scouting 31 players. You know, 35 if you don't count the kickers and the punters. Or, maybe not 35, 25. If you know what you're going to want in the draft, as well as when you're going to draft them and what position and all that, you can get a good amount of players scouted, and once you get good at it, you're going to know when players are better than the other. Once you get a good idea, definitely get a piece of paper and just write down all the players that you see that are good. And just write down their projected draft round. Make sure that you are spreading out your scouting, because you don't want a lot of players first round, because they're going to go off the board after round one. And once you have those players, once you come up to the draft, you can just be like, oh, is this player available? Oh, I'll take him. Or you might want to draft around before they're going to pick, so you pretty much guaranteed get them. 
and now I'm going to show you the draft. So once you get to the draft, as long as you've spent a lot of time and scouting points on a large number of players, you're going to pick out the ones that are good. You know, the seven or however many picks you have, the best players that you can get out of the draft. And you'll know because you can see their stats as you're drafting. So even if you're not sure, you know, maybe one player goes and then you don't even have to pick. You just pick the guy that's left. But what I'm actually doing here is I'm going to be drafting the highest possible each and every time I get a chance. Because some people in later rounds, in 4 or 5, they'll skip on their players that they're going to get. And they'll just go with the player that's projected to go round 1. And I'm going to show you that the computer actually does not choose these players for a reason. So let's say that the player that you want gets picked and you don't have any other options or you haven't looked into a lot of other positions and the guy that you want next is later in the rounds, you can always trade down. So these guys are all gonna give a fourth round pick next year for a fifth round pick this year. And if you don't have any other options, it's the best just to trade down because you can get you know, another player next year and you won't be just randomly guessing on a player that might not even make your team. So we're going to keep picking here and we get six draft picks and five of them came from players that were projected to go in the first three rounds and one came in the fifth round and if I wouldn't have drafted them they would probably still be on the board. And I'm just going to show you here their overalls are not good and why you should not draft them. And looking at what we drafted we had two 72 overalls. 64, 59, 62, 50, and 64. I don't know how the computer knows that these players are bad, but if they don't go where they're projected to go, they're not going to be good players. And I also check because some people said that these players usually have very good development, but like really low starting stats. And here I'm going to show you that that isn't necessarily true for the players that we drafted at least. Okay, so I'm going to be testing some other uh, myths about scouting, and the problem with Madden is that they give you these two stats, the physical stat and the intangible stat, and I really don't know for sure what these stats do. I'm pretty sure physical is, you know, how the player performs physically, like if they're going to make like big hits, it might, it might play into that, but from the draft we didn't get anything really, and now we're going to go over to the uh, draft I did with only drafting high intangibles which it's like intangible means like you can't touch it so what I think it is it's like personality but they forgot to take it out with a new personality trait and we got some pretty good players but I wouldn't really count on it because two of them were offensive linemen which are consistently good in later rounds like I've said before and one was a first round pick which we'd expect to be a 75 so I don't really know what intangibles does some people say it does give good draft i you know maybe if you really want to look at some later round picks maybe i i wouldn't count on it i would definitely not look at these stats now we're going to look at production which is i think it's how much the players contributed on their team because higher round picks have a lot of production while lower round picks have like almost none and we got a pretty okay draft so maybe this one's to look at when you're drafting early round players while intangibles is like a lower round players i'm not really too sure this is just it's too vague to go off of but i hope this video helped you with scouting